This NFL Week Five Props and Better Capital Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet a hundred dollars at WinBet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by SGPN Fantasy. They're giving away an autographed DeAndre Swift jersey and a merch store gift card. Get all the details by following them on Twitter at SGPN Fantasy. We're also brought to you by the MLB Gambling Podcast. They're giving away a MLB jersey as part of their wild card playoff contest exclusively in the SGPN app. This is Jerry Glanville and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, brother. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. I realize we didn't hit James Robinson carries last week, but yes. what we did do is we alerted the marketplace to it because <laughs> it's up to 14 and a half this week. Yeah. So even though he went under, that, that they is still weird. adjusted it. <laughs> yeah, because he went way under, and then they ended up moving it yeah. up a ton. Two, two, two more carries. So since we got onto it, it's moved up a total of five carries. Sean, do you have the list of the the props I gave out last week? Because I felt like it was uh, a pretty strong. Uh, pretty strong props week. I know one of my. Uh, we'll have to shove the uh, the intern in the lot. No, we don't. We do not have that data in front uh, of you. Right I know now. one of my favorite plays was Jonathan Taylor under rushing yards. Yes. That was like ninety three and a half. The Darnell Mooney one killed me on one play. Uh, the rest of his couple catches uh, didn't get him anywhere close, but they did hit one deep shot. All right, Ryan. Uh, this is an awesome episode. We got a ton of NFL props. We'll be joined in a little bit here by uh, Scott Reichel, aka Reichel Radio on Twitter. You know him from the MLB Gambling Podcast, Propcast, NFL Gambling Podcast. If we're hosting a podcast, Scott five, is five tool player. Yes, Scott is uh, somewhere on the network cranking out the content, and we we'll also be joined later by David Avon Egmond. Uh, you know him from a uh, Better Capital. He was the guy behind the. Barstool pen deal. So I know hmm. I, we get a lot of uh, business questions like about the industry. Hey, how do I get started? Uh, or just like all different, you know, aspects about the business of sports gambling. Thought he would be an interesting guest to have on there. Oh, as well. Absolutely. We, we haven't been back to the VIP room since the Madden Sim. So yes. excited to get back into the velvet ropes. <laughs> a little behind the scenes business stuff to close it out on a Friday. But of course. Talking NFL props. Also, be giving out a uh, win, build your own bet for the London game. London Giants versus your Green Bay Packers. Shout out to Billy, host of the uh, Soccer Gambling Podcast, Big Cheese Head himself. He's going to be on there with his uh, Packers scarf, rooting on the home team, hoping they're very fit. And hey, uh, this week you looking to join Win Bet's biggest winners club? Whoever hits the biggest parlay on Win Bet odds size will get a thousand dollar free bet. Win Bet, I'm going to be in Arizona this weekend. I'm coming for you. Uh, last weekend, someone turned six dollars into four thousand plus. They got a thousand dollar free bet. Truly, uh, hashtag DGens only. Again, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Win Bet to get started. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to get started today. Bet $100, get $100. Offer subject to change terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where play through winbet is available. If you're someone you know has a gaming problem, call 1 800 522 4700. Also, we're brought to you by Fubo TV. Fubo TV gives you complete coverage of college and pro football with. NFL Red Zone plus 4K uh, games at no extra charge. You got the cloud based DVR, fraction of the price of cable, no contract, no commitment, can cancel at any time. Uh, try Fubo TV free for seven days and 15% off your first month. Go to FuboTV.com slash SGP. FuboTV.com slash SGP. Joining us on the line, you know him from a ton of podcasts over on the SGPN network. Man of many talents, man of many picks. Uh, Mr. Scott Reichel. What's happening, Scott? 
nothing much. Nice to see you guys. I believe it's the first time I've been on the show since the NBA draft. So I hope you guys have been doing well. Oh. Uh, yes. Good casting. to check in. We were in Vegas, yeah. right? Or was that <laughs> after that? Uh, you oh. were there. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it. Oh yes. Yes. But, um, oh, yeah. Good. Good to connect. No, we were hanging out in Vegas in the summer, right? Or was that in the spring? Oh wait, but then was that? I think that was before the NBA draft. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, old guy over here. Yeah, you can really clip together an old guy montage of <laughs> me saying the words "old guy." Lately. Now, Scott, you have uh, you crack me up with some of the parlays <laughs> that you hit on, where it's like first half in the uh, you know Alcorn State game tied with the uh, WNBA future with an yep. alt uh, uh, puck line. Yeah, an alt puck line <laughs> in the Senators game. Do uh, you have any uh, like crazy multi-sport parlays going that you're sitting on? Well, as of right now, no, I actually just did cash one. I had a WNBA single game bet parlayed with the Cardinals to win the NL Central. Oh, that's and that, that paid out of like plus 250, I think. That got there. <laughs> that was nice. But I did no, see I think, that on Twitter. Think, that's what made me think of it. I don't think anything is going to top either the random two day stretch that I had in Vegas where I was just sharing all oh, my man. picks and they yes. all hit, or the Warriors title future mixed in with. Uh, what was it? New Mexico yeah. first half money line against New Mexico <laughs> State. It was something absurd. But no, the last crazy one I had was tying in an MLB division future with a WNBA game, and that ended up cashing. I, so, I will say, so good. as far as timing, I mean, to come out, uh, I would assume it for the for the most part, everyone uh, related to SGPN, you were meeting for the first time. And then for us to go on this collective oh, parlay yeah. heater, not a not a normal heater of like, oh yeah, we're just hitting our picks. Oh, four teamer, bang. Five teamer, bang. Moonoff gave out some great ones. We we got to get the game back together, Ryan. That was an epic trip. Um, Scott, what about Let's your pencil that in for yes. March, Matt? Yeah. Uh, what, what about your uh, what about your NFL season so far? How's it been going? Do you got any any futures? Like, what have you been really right about, and what have you been really wrong about in the NFL so far? So far, so good. I mean, it's kind of been hit or miss, but overall, the props been doing well for me. I do have a couple of futures that I'm kind of sweating out right now. I think I feel good about one of them that I'm sweating out right now, though. I have Carson Wentz under in passing yards, and I'm Ooh. just waiting for him to get benched. Yes. And it's it's going to happen. So I'm just waiting for that to happen. But still, besides that, I did have a couple of futures in the NFC East. It'll make Sean happy, but I took the Eagles to win the division. And I also had the Cowboys win total under 10 and a half, which I felt a lot better about before the season started, but Cooper rush has done pretty well. <laughs> and right. I still think the Cowboys are going to end up probably winning close to 10. So I'm not officially, you know, ripping the ticket up, but the Eagles should win the division. They'll be favored in basically every game. That's why I took them to win the division, but the Cowboys, I might've been a little bit wrong about that defense has been a lot better than I thought it was going to be. No, no, it's a horrible time to be on this show. <laughs> every, every guest that comes on, just lathers you up. Sean. Well, but I, it's I, I fucking I gross. Scott did it. Did it well. He said, you know, there's still a chance for the Cowboys to hit the under. He went at. He said they're not as bad as he thought. He didn't directly compliment the Cowboys. No, but uh, which no, we I'm saying he was show. complimenting the Eagles. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, uh, Scott. Everyone right now comes on. They compliment well, Ryan, what are you. you gonna they, say they're dominating top it, to bottom. It's like it's like your kid just got a scholarship to play <laughs> ball in D1. Like, oh, congrats on the. Well, and you know, I was obviously leaning into uh, Jalen Hurts. Who's, congrats who's, on the victory. Everyone knows you're part of the team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I use we a lot. Hey, by, so. by the way, oh, congrats on being three and one yourself. Oh, yes. That, See that now go. that Scott's an all-around gentleman now. <laughs> it's just bringing me into the conversation. All right, all right. Uh, let's get to it. Can we real talk? We were talking sure. about this in the office. If we're talking about stuff we were right and wrong about, I was looking going through our massive list of preseason props, and I noticed, oh, because it was in the same calendar item that reminded me that this is the look-ahead spot for the Bills. That I had the Chiefs to go five and zero oh and then lose the Bills at thirty to one, <laughs> and if they don't lose to the goddamn Colts in that weird ass close your eyes special, well, but do they? I get got up a thirty as, to one ticket on the <laughs> Bills this week. Do they get up as much for that Tampa yeah, no, Bay I, game if they don't lose to the Colts? No, that, I, that's I the question. It. I get it. Well, it's a sliding. It's, it's, it's the butterfly effect, yeah, it's Ryan. The transitive property of non-effect. It's the National Football League. All right, we're gonna start off the prop segment with. A prop from No House Advantage. Again, recommend going to nohouseadvantage.com. Use our promo code SGPN. Get a first deposit match up to twenty five dollars. 
uh, playing on no house advantage has been really fun. And again, if you fancy yourself a sharp prop better, you got to get over there because they're their contests. It seems like there's overlay with some of these guaranteed prizes where it's not filling up. Like I feel like there's a ton of value uh, to be had on these contests. They run them for Thursday, Sunday. Uh, again, it's like DFS, but you're instead of just playing a player at a certain price, you're playing the over under on their player props. So no has advantage.com promo code S G P N our first prop will be something you can play over at okay. no house advantage. You want me to start? Sure. What do you Cr- got? Christian McCaffrey under, mm. and this is one I would put high up on the confidence points. Yeah. So also you, you do it by confidence. So the one you're uh, most confident on you, you score like nine points, least confident one. So they seem to have seven prop contests. And then like for the larger slates, they'll do 10, but Christian McCaffrey under 53 and a half rushing yards. I, I saw Wait, this set at 53 and a half. I saw this nugget out in the wild 15 and two to the under against the San Francisco 49ers, the leading running back of the opposing team. That, that feels pretty strong. So no house advantage, max, max confidence points. <laughs> Egg well, plan it, emoji. It, it'll be interesting too. Cause McCaffrey's coming off a interesting fantasy game where he's eight for 27 rushing but got really involved in the passing game. Nine targets, nine catches, eighty-one yards, That's what and we're a gonna touchdown. See. That's what we're going to see going. So you think forward. it's going to be more, more of the passing stuff in this matchup? Yeah, it's it's the Niners, bro. Yeah, it, it Niners, was Niners, bro. But before that, he had back-to-back hundred-yard rushing games. I, I don't against think Carolina uh, against the Saints and against the Giants. Mm. I, I don't think the Panthers really have an idea what they're doing on offense. Still ben, trying to figure ben, it out. We'll never forget Ben McAdoo. We are we are days away from Ben McAdoo being an interim head coach. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's gonna be weird times we in need Carolina. A countdown. Uh, Scott, what do you got? What do you what do you like uh, first prop here? So I'm gonna go with something that I know the entire SGPN community cashed on on Monday night, and I'm gonna roll it over. It's Stafford interception. Yeah, I can't really say no to that one. I know that all of us had it against the Niners. I don't know how you couldn't. The price was so cheap, and the price is still cheap. But the point is Stafford has been an interception machine. He's thrown at least one interception in three of the first four games this season, even dating back to last year's Super Bowl run. He's thrown at least one interception in nine of his last 12 games. In his, in those same 12 games, he has 17 interceptions. And Dallas is averaging one interception per game, which ranks tied <laughs> for ninth. But Stafford is just an interception machine. There's no way around it. And I do think the Cowboys can generate a pass rush. They have a decent secondary with Diggs, who's very opportunistic. He might get burned, but for this prop, you want him to be very aggressive when it comes to interceptions. I think he throws at least one. Give me Stafford to throw a pick. And I, I looked it up, so I had uh, you have Stafford most interceptions, fourteen to one. Fourteen to one. Yeah, <laughs> that was. I I, I mean, because with the most interceptions prop that we gave out early on the season, obviously you want a guy that's not going to lose his starting job, but that also has the ability to throw yeah. it. And then he was dealing with that like elbow stuff. He was dealing with the back stuff. He clearly, I, I don't know if it's long term stuff or if he's just not 100% mixed with the fact that this Rams offense is completely out of sync. And the the 49ers probably should have had like three picks. Um, they dropped a couple like pretty easy ones too. And honestly, like I'll jump ahead because I Stafford obviously to go over his interceptions is one of my prop, my, one of my re- non uh, my regular props we'll call it because and, and the price conversation is interesting because it's still minus one twenty five. Yeah, we're still for reference. Zach Wilson's minus two forty. Like they <laughs> they have the ability to do this. It is weird that they're not uh, adjusting it enough. I saw it close as like minus one thirty five in some places. So but why do they open it back up at <laughs> minus one? What are they doing? I have no idea. All right, All right. Who, my your first my no house advantage prop. I'm going with Will Disley over <laughs> seventeen and a half receiving yards. He's hit the over three out of the last four games. Um, there's chemistry there and, and three of those four games. He also had a touchdown. Like I, I we really got to be looking into maybe playing him in uh DFS more it's in a dome. Like it's there's the perfect some, correlation, right? Like yeah. you, you get the, the performance is there and the quarterback looks to him around the red zone. The only, the only game he didn't get was uh, on the road against San Francisco, well, which I mean, their defense is lights out and, and no that's one, the only game. He didn't have a tackle either. I, and that's or a touchdown. He actually, I'm Confuse it because he did have a solo tackle. It was on a Geno Smith pick. Yeah, they they didn't. I mean, they didn't achieve the red zone in that game. I don't think so. It makes sense. Well, they did, but then they they drew up a play where they had four running backs and oh, they had. Right. I think they had like T.J. Dallas threw an interception. Horrible, it was it was a nightmare idea. of the game. 
Uh, let's get some more props. Obviously, Kramer, what do you got? Yeah, so Sta- I'll just Stafford, so Stafford over. Uh, over I, I mean, it, yeah. isn't that just? Don't we just write that one in pen? Hey, it's a lock. How, how can it, it not hit? What What's the price you stop playing? It? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question for Scott. Do you remember Rudy, numbers guy? What remember you, cheering it on live in Vegas <laughs> yes. at the FFP when he threw that interception? Dude, it was like the oh, first. That big, was great. It was the first, first moment of the season where it was like, "Fuck yes, I got it." I, I think once it hits like. I don't know, minus 180, 190. Maybe I'm not playing it, but Scott, what, what would you have to set the <laughs> Stafford interception juice at where you're not on it? Uh, to not be on it, I'd say probably 170, something yeah. like that. Some of it depends on what defense you're against. Cause if you're against just an atrocious defense, then maybe you could pass. But as Ryan said before, it's minus 125. Uh, yeah. I, I don't really know. And the Cowboys defense, as I said before, is better than I thought it was going to be. And you mentioned how Stafford has the injury issues during the off season. They also can't really block anybody. Their offensive yeah. line is kind of atrocious. And I think that Parsons and Warren's can get after oh. them. I'd say 170, give or take. But at 125, I think it's an auto play. Yeah, 100 percent What's your next prop, Scott? So the next one, I'm gonna go to the Bills and the Steelers game. And the Bills are projected to win by a large margin. I'm I'm gonna pick a prop that kind of supports that. I'm gonna take Josh Allen over 270 and a half passing yards. He's recorded at least 297 in three of the first four games. He's recorded 297 in five of the last six, dating back to last year. And Pittsburgh is allowing 251.5 passing yards per game, which ranks 21st in the league. Now, I know you're going to hear that number and say that's less than 270 and a half. I'm going to get to that in a second. You got to look at the quarterbacks they faced. They faced Zach Wilson, Jacoby Brissett, (laughs) Mac Jones, and Joe Burrow. And they're ranking 21st in passing yards allowed. Now you face probably the best passing offense in the league. I think this number is way too low. Plus, Pittsburgh might not be able to move the ball. So Buffalo might get a ton of possessions in this one. But I think this number is just too low because of the fact that Pittsburgh's defense without TJ Watt has been atrocious. And I think that Buffalo is going to really torch this team from start to finish. Mm. I'm also uh, pulling a prop from that uh, Steelers Bills game. I'm going George Pickens over 37 and a half receiving yards. He's seemingly uh, kind of got some chemistry with Kenny Pickett. I mean, last game against the Jets, he had six for 102. Even the game before that, that ugly game uh, against Cleveland, um, where the Steelers lost, he still had three for 39. I think having those couple extra days. Uh, or wait, no, never mind. Steelers played on Sunday. Either way, like I just think Tomlin is gonna see like, hey, we gotta get this guy involved. And to Scott's the point, the number feels really low. The, yeah, to Scott's point. It was point, on my list as well. They could be blowing, they could be getting blown out, and Pickens is just gonna have some really soft coverage as they sit back and don't let him get any deep stuff. And the guy seems like a real talent. So did, did you watch the game last week? Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's the chemistry seems there. The the number feels it's almost like if you look across the entire Steelers team, all those numbers are in like the thirty to forty yard range, as if they have no idea who he's going to favor between I think, Claypool, I think, Fryer, Moore. Yeah, I think Pickens. Pickens is his guy. Yeah. So I'm taking the over there on thirty seven and a half. What about you, Ryan? All right. Uh, let's let's get juicy. Actually, you know what? I'll stay in the same game. How how do games get weird? How do games get weird? Mm. Well, a, a, a good team. Uh, plays really bad, so bad that the other team gets a defensive touchdown, like the Jags and Eagles, for example. Mm, a good example, right? Uh, so, uh, looking for high variance offenses, and I threw this out on the pick show, but Josh Allen played the worst half of football, according to DVOA last week, <clears throat> in the first half of that game. This week, they have the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I understand the Steelers are banged up and hurt. But the only way the Steelers get something done in this game is if the defense makes some noise. The defensive touchdown this week, priced at seven to one. Give me the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ooh. Anytime touchdown. Seven to one. I'm like obviously, it. you know, there's a little bit of the uh, the heartstring here. We where we have our, <laughs> uh, our our retirement money tied up in the Steelers right now, which isn't looking good. No, it's but it's a fun long shot. I wanted to pick I wanted to pick one that was a little bit more of a long shot and Josh Allen is doing week every week. We say this, we watch God, God's eye. He must hear it too much. He probably getting sick of it, <laughs> but we just sit here and like hey, Josh Allen is doing like old Josh Allen things. It's, it's almost like Ken Dorsey can't keep him. He, what he has though. The difference is well, one they're they're not as aggressive on early downs, which has been an interesting change. And then two, to your point, like, yeah, struggling a little bit in the first half, he still has that 
switch he seems to flip late in the games where he takes yeah. it over. Um, but yeah, to your point, a defensive touchdown certainly in the realm of again. There, there's two tiers of defensive touchdown prices, it's and like you get the special teams. They have, had a block punt for a touchdown uh, last year. They played in Buffalo. It's like you're either five to one or less. At, at which point, you're a defense that you probably are considered good, and you have a good matchup. And then there's everything else. And seven to one is like a pretty high price. I mean, like what were you asking me earlier? How much was the quarterback's price to score the anytime? Yeah, six to one. So, yeah, I Kenny feel like Pickett. that. That's you know. They should be the same price. Yeah. What about right. you, Scott? What do you got? Well, the one thing I might push back a little bit on, no. I get, I like the value at seven to one. Keep an eye if Minka's going to play or not. Yeah. If you I want know. defensive touchdown, you kind of need. He's, Minka he's to actually your guy. Play. Yeah. Yeah. I, but, he's playing. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. Just throwing it out there. No, he's but, he's dealing with a knee issue. Uh, Ryan gave me the same response when I pointed out. Minka that. plays. Come on. He's <laughs> he's a dog. I didn't he's, say it wasn't going to cash. I'm just saying. Just keep an eye on it. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand the defense isn't what they used to be. <laughs> What do you, do you have got? any stats from the wild to support uh, the Steelers defensive touch? No, of no? course not. It's just the beautiful <laughs> jerseys in that. I matchup. still don't even know what that means, by the way, I, the 15, 15 and two to the under, I like, but what does stats from the wild even mean? I don't even know oh, what that means. You like the internet, the, just the, the <laughs> meaning, oh, okay. meaning like I, 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 I dove into the data <laughs> found it on the internet to me, me uh, generally I'll, that's me citing something I found that I forgot where I found it. Basically. Fair enough. Wild Fair is cool. just a all encompassing <laughs> adjective for Ryan. What about you, Scott? What do you got? So moving on to a matchup between the Browns and the Chargers, I'm going to go with Nick Chubb over oh. 86 and a half rushing yards. Mm. I know that that number seems high against this rushing defense. It's really not high enough. He's recorded at least 87 in each of the first four games. He's had at least seven, 17 carries in each of the first four games. And the Chargers are allowing 5.4 rushing yards per carry, which is the second highest in the league. The chargers allowed Pierce to go for 131 last week, Robinson for a hundred, two weeks ago, Chubb's a great running back. I think 86 and a half is too low. If Cleveland wants to keep this game competitive, they're going to have to dominate in the trenches, especially with Bosa being injured for the chargers. I think Chubb probably goes North of hundred, but 86 and a half against this rush defense. I got to take the over. I saw the graph of expected yards, like X axis. Y axis, actual rush yards. And C- Cleveland is like the absolute top right corner. Like they're dominant right now in the run game. And then I saw the graph that was rush defense expected versus yeah. actual. And the Chargers are in the bottom left of that one. Yeah, this is a, I, it almost seems like people don't play rushing yards as much anymore because of PP. Here's my conspiracy theory PPR mm. fantasy football has created this thing where we don't like Nick Chubb anymore. We don't like the rushing props. Those are lame. I'd rather bet the receiving prop. I caught myself on this too. So I, I love Nick Chubb this week. Absolutely. The volume will be there. I mean, I, I, I locked it up for a reason. Love that one. I'm running thin. I, I came with eight props, but Scott's already <laughs> doubled me up on a couple and you doubled me up on George. Hey, Pickens. great minds. Uh, think alike, Ryan. All right. Next up for me, I'm going to take AJ Brown over 75 and a half receiving yards. I mean, chalky is all hell, but I think the opportunity is going to be there against this Cardinals defense in a dome, you know, last game, even last game where they really went out of their way to run the ball a ton because of the weather conditions, he still got 95 receiving yards. It's very clear. He is Jalen hurts his guy. I mean, look what they did against Detroit on the road in a dome, put up 10 catches for 155. Um, the only game he didn't get over uh, 75 and a half was uh, against Minnesota five for 69. Like they really went out of their way to feed uh, Devonta Smith there, and they and they had a big lead and could kind of sit on it. So maybe that's how they don't get it. But seventy five and a half, I'm I'm all in on AJ Brown. Dude's a dude's a beast. Good pick. <laughs> what, right? What Me? if if you want to counter the AJ Brown? I'm I'm all ears. The Cardinals are wearing the black unis. Look, uh, fire. look out, yeah. Scott. <laughs> Scott, weigh in. Uh, AJ Brown, are you are you in on this matchup against the Cards? I mean, you look at who Arizona has in the secondary, you're not exactly impressed. Now, for some reason, Arizona was actually able to flip a switch after the first quarter against the Rams. They've randomly been decent for like six straight quarters or seven straight quarters defensively. They also played Baker Mayfield for four of them, so that shouldn't even count. But the point (laughs) is, I do think that A.J. Brown is going to be a matchup problem. Smith was kind of quiet last week. I know he's kind of been nursing a little bit of an injury there. Nothing serious, but still. 
I can't really say no to AJ Brown in that spot because you're looking at Arizona's pass rush or their secondary. They're not exactly a good defense. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Kramer, what do you got here? Tom Brady over two and a half passing touchdowns plus one sixty. Woo! Come on. It's uh, we what did you say, Sean? He replaced the picture of his wife and kids with his <laughs> offensive line. Uh, yeah, I'm co-signing this. I was trying to find the breast. Uh, I like him over yardage too, but I'll I'll just co-sign the chalky. No, it's a touchdowns. touchdown thing. I yeah. think I think he puts up one of those games uh, again. Narrow target distribution, hopefully, especially with Brait dealing with a head, not a head, shoulder injury, but maybe a head injury. Um, Even keep it chalky with the Mike Evans anytime touchdown. Like that is that has been a print fest. Yeah. It's right up there with like Stafford interceptions. And I almost would play the Godwin anytime this mm. week. I I think I think everyone's gonna eat. And I think, like I said, it's back to like classic Tom Brady mode. This also could be like a Rashad White coming out. Maybe we're gonna just see him kind of run out there, run his offense, everything's clicking. Uh, I certainly think the the price being plus one sixty, I enjoy. Yeah. And we saw him just coming off a game, what he throw for three fifty eight? Something like that. Yeah. The 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 reason the Bucks had a higher DVO DVOA than the Chiefs in that game was because they threw so much, and I understand it was because maybe they were falling behind, or maybe they just need to get back to being that like insane pass funnel. So over two and a half passing touchdowns. For yeah, I'm with you, uh, Scott. What about you? What do you, what's next up on the prop list? So for the next one, I'm going to go to a receiver in a pretty underrated matchup between the Jets and the Dolphins. I'm going to go Corey Davis over 39 and a half receiving Ooh. yards. I don't know why this number is so low. He's had at least 74 in three of the first four games. Miami is allowing 299.3 passing yards per game, which is the second most in the league. Byron Jones still out. Xavier Howard questionable, but it seems like he's doubtful based on the news. But Corey Davis has gone for 70 plus in three of four. And you look at his numbers with Wilson last year. There was a bit of chemistry there. I know Wilson targeted him a lot down the stretch in that fourth quarter against Pittsburgh. I don't know why this number is below 40 when Miami's allowing roughly 300 per game. I get Zach Wilson might not be the best quarterback in the world. I'm not saying he is, but the secondary is beaten to hell and back. I'm going to take 39 and a half. The number seems very, very low. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. And also, there's a world where Miami gets out to a lead and they're playing from behind, mm -hmm. or you know, Wilson takes some sack stuff and he's got to chuck it up on, on third and long or, or find some easy underneath stuff. And it seems like to your point, he really likes Corey Davis. So yeah, that's, that's a, uh, I like that one. There are four, like, it's very clear that Corey Davis, he run he, he's on the field almost as much as Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore runs almost as many routes last week had set was second in targets behind only Garrett Wilson. I, I agree. It, it's because again, it's the fantasy football community. It's the same people that are all no in one on drafted. Kyle Pitts. No one drafted Corey Davis, so there's no one playing Corey oh, Davis. Over. No one. My best ball teams are littered with shit teams <laughs> with Zach Wilson, Corey Davis, and Garrett Wilson that you made fun of. Look out! They're doing well. Here they come. Forty passing yards. All right, Ryan. What do you? Uh, I'm co-signing the Brady, but what's your what's your fourth one here? Uh, one, two, three. Uh, oh, Jimmy G. Over a half interceptions. Mm. This one is even money. We highlighted the fact that they had they're dealing with a backup. So left tackle goes out, backup of left tackle goes out. Jimmy G is horrible under pressure. Panthers have a good to a to a pretty good pass rush. I think it's gonna eat this week. And as much as we love the San Francisco defensive matchup here, I think the Carolina defense has a good matchup as well. We've seen Jimmy G. Like when he's when things are clicking and they're able to run the rock and he has time to throw, he looks great. But what happened when he didn't? We saw it right away. First game comes out. What does he look like? Denver got a decent pass rush, got a decent pass defense, making some bad decisions. So I absolutely love for him to throw a pick here. And I love that it's plus one hundred. Yeah. Um, and even the George Kittle, they they moved it down. I love the under four and a half. Uh, last week, I think oh. it, you might even want to look again at at Kittle. They moved it down to three and a half. It's so down to three and a half. Yeah, it, I don't know. That's not as easy. Operating as a, a they, tackle. Yeah, and I just don't think they're gonna have a ton of routes run. I think they're just gonna run the ball with Debo, and you know, not Jeff get, Wilson's I gonna think, get much. Carries. I think the only thing that hurts you on the Jimmy G is that they limit the amount of times Jimmy G throws. Like this to me feels like 
15 pass attempts, Debo 200 rushing yards. <laughs> like they just they just pound it down Carolina's throat. They're paying they Debo good, on the side. They get good field position cuz of the turnovers. If you find a turnover prop it, it, like total well, for this game, let, that let's seems just, like Let me clean out my last prop then cuz it's, it's Sure. It's also in this game. It's Jeff Wilson to go over 17 and a half carries. Mm. I know the number's high, but I it this game is just going to be low scoring junk. So I, I think they go. I thought they were going to try to find a way to get one of these other running backs involved, but it's pretty clear they don't trust any of them. And you see what happens when Kyle Shanahan doesn't trust you. He ships you out of town like Trey <laughs> Sermon. So he does have a, he does seem to have a short leash for all these guys. I mean, unless Debo, to your point, gets eight or nine carries in this game, I expect them to run the the, the shit out of the ball. So over seventeen and a half carries for Jeff Wilson. Yeah, Scott, what do you got? I'm gonna stick with that game. I'm gonna go with the other quarterback though. It's a little juicy, but I'm gonna take it anyway. It's Baker Mayfield to throw a pick at around minus one fifty five. He's had at least one reception in seven of his last ten games. He's attempted at least 25 passes in each of the first four games. So a lot of volume in there. Carolina is also allowing 2.8 sacks per game, which ranks tied for 23rd. We saw the Niners had seven sacks against Stafford. I think Mayfield will be running for his life. And we know when he's pressured, he panics and he makes a lot of really dumb throws. The Niners have also been really good against the run to kind of touch upon the McCaffrey angle from earlier. The Niners are allowing just 2.9 yards per carry, which is the best in the entire league. And the Niners are also favored by seven or six and a half. So the not so the Niners should be up late. You're assuming the Panthers will have to throw the ball a lot, kind of like what happened against Arizona last week. But Mayfield against bad defenses throws picks. Against yeah. mediocre defenses throws picks. Now he's against probably a top three defense in the league. I think he's, he might get benched when Darnold comes back. That's how bad he's been for this team. But I'm going to take him to throw a pick because you mentioned how Wilson could be minus 200 and Stafford shouldn't be minus 125. Mayfield in this game should probably be closer to 190, 200. Yeah, no, and and someone really burned him on Twitter. They basically took a three and a half million dollar pay cut to start for the Panthers, and uh, I think he's like 34th in in uh, quarterback EPA or whatever, whatever sort of efficiency metric. So tough times. He's also got worse numbers than all the other shitty quarterbacks that Matt Rules had over the first couple games, like Cam Newton, worse I, numbers. And again, like Sam I Sam Darnold, worse numbers than you know. Uh, Matt Rule deserves to be on the hot seat, but in his, if I'm his agent, I go <laughs> look at these quarterbacks that I've had to deal the fuck with. Fuck, am I doing with yeah, this? Yeah, come on. But yeah, I mean, I, I think one I, the sack props are not up for this game, but oh. there are going to be some sacks in this one. And, and uh, shout out to I forget the YouTube commenter that chimed in our show, Bosa's but like gonna eat. Bosa, it's, it's personal. You know, Baker uh, planted that flag against Ohio State. He's gonna be fired up. I would say you if you could if you can find a place to diabolically parlay these. Bosa and Burns both get a sack. That's the. That's the super fun one. Yeah, that is uh that'll be sweet. Uh all right, for me, I'm taking the under here. Huh. I like this guy uh as a fantasy prospect, but not in this matchup. Tyler Algier under 44 and a half rushing yards. I know everyone says like, "Oh, hey, Patterson's out. He's going to definitely get this." I I don't think it's that easy. Um because you look at Tyler Algier, like he got it last week against Cleveland 10 for 84. That's tough to you know continue that yards per attempt. He also had ten carries week one against the Rams, only got thirty yards. I know they like um, Caleb Huntley as well, even Avery Williams in there. Marcus Mariota will have some runs, but really, like I just I think no Kyle Pitts runs though. No Kyle Pitts is out. Um, I think this Tampa Bay rush defense in particular kind of got embarrassed last week, and I think they're going to have a chip on their shoulder at home. I think the Falcons are going to be playing from behind, and I don't think they're going to be able to uh, only allow Marcus Mariota to throw 19 pass attempts. I think they're no. going to have to be throwing a bunch, and I think it's going to be tough for them to stick with the run game. I think they're going to get down early, and I just think it's going to be tough to keep uh, Algier involved in the run game. So give me Algier under 44 and a half rush yards. Yeah, I mean he had a big run too. So I mean, yeah, his, I mean his long was forty two yards. You take that one out, it was nine for forty two. And yards. certainly maybe he breaks one, but I think I think the Bucks got embarrassed on prime time, chip on their shoulder game. The, I don't see them losing three in a your row. Your concern is that Atlanta is still good and they're able to slow down the Bucks and they can impose their will and run no. the ball thirty five times again. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, but if that happens, you know I can always hedge with some Falcons money line. I guess I don't know. I 
game script wise, I think it's just going to be tough for them to get there without. I, I do think the fact that Huntley got as many carries as. Yeah, like it's not a it's not Tyler like a Dalvin Caleb, Cook like two Alexander twins. Madison thing, you know. On a sick uh, 2020 sitcom. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, look. We got him in the eighth week, so hopefully he looks good. But I, I like that you're betting against him to to, to send a message. Well, we're not starting him though yeah, in no, the eighth league. It, it, exactly, all you we're need benching to him. He, we're sending him a message. You're betting is under. Brian, breaking news: According to uh, NFL rumors, uh, Giants are expected to be without Kadarius Tony for the matchup against really? the Packers. Well, there goes the trick play angle. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, I, I wanted to alert you because I know we're doing a win bet, build your own bet later, and and no, it doesn't matter. Okay. I like I told you the win bet. Uh, there must be a problem with the uh, calculator over there because this price is is not right. Uh, what do you got for your uh, last prop, Ryan? I think I've given them out. I've given out okay. at least six. All right. Uh, what about you, Scott? You got one more left. You want to toss out? Yeah, I got one more. First of all, I will co-sign the Brady stuff. I didn't say that before. I think he's going to go nuclear this week. I think yeah. if you want to go for <laughs> him and Evans to really just have a big game, that's what I expect because Tampa, as you said, got embarrassed against Kansas City. Plus, if you want to talk about the picture of the offensive line or however Brady's getting motivated for this <laughs> game now that he's got something else to deal with, I do think it might be a bit of a can't really call it a revenge game, but you know my point. I think I'll be motivated <laughs> yeah. to put in a good performance. But I am going to go to a matchup between the Texans and the Jaguars, another quarterback interception prop. I'm going to take Davis Mills at around minus 150. He's thrown two interceptions in each of the last two games. Jacksonville have been very, very good at forcing interceptions. The Jaguars are averaging 1.8 opponent interceptions per game, which ranks tied for first in the league. They played last year. Mills in one start had a pick in that game and the Texans, whether they should be or not are getting seven points. So if you're expecting them to trail in the fourth quarter, and if you're buying into the Jaguars, AFC South hype, then they might have a game flow that benefits mills to throw a pick, but he's been pretty careless with the ball. I think he'll be careless again. And Jacksonville's defense, even though they did lose to Philly, they did a pretty good job and they intercepted Hertz. They had a touchdown last week, but still I like that defensive unit. I think one fifty is a pretty decent price. Yeah, and they t- they turned over Matt Ryan at home last time they had a division game. So, um, yeah, as as a it, Texans believer, I I I think that is unfortunately a good. Is angle. it possible we're seeing the poor interception pricing because we're just seeing, as Tom Brady put it today, just bad football, and we're seeing more interceptions than we typically would. I would I would like to do a deep dive on that and see. All right. uh, Ryan, you gave out a, uh, a kind of like a longer shot anytime touchdown. I'm gonna return mm. the favor. Going back to that Steelers Bills game, give me Kenny Pickett anytime touchdown. Maybe I'm chasing touchdowns here because he had two um, against the Jets. But you saw the hair coming out of the helmet. No, well, like, yeah, oh, it looks like a young Dan <laughs> Marino. No, I I think again th- the reason he's starting over Trubisky is because of his mobility. I wouldn't be surprised if they draw up some boot action stuff near the goal line. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a fourth down and he doesn't. He oh. doesn't. We see this all the time with quarterbacks early on where they are much more willing runners until they get lit up a couple times. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh yeah, I should Fuck. hang out in the pocket. These uh, dudes are strong. I mean, Kenny Pickett was like lowering his shoulder into the goal line. That to me is a guy who's, who's like willing it. to put his body on the line. I like Kenny Pickett. I, I like his rush yard props too, but I think it's fun to play the anytime touchdown at plus 600. Again, the game could kind of get away from them and you know, anything Diabolical. goes there at six to one. What about you, Ryan? Let's let's fire up our uh, our hammers and get and start building some bets. This is simple. This is like glue and construction paper. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. Build your own bet. Uh we're doing one for the London game. Kramer, I'll give you the honors. I mean, you could probably just do Giants money line and like no. one prop and you're already pretty good I'm odds. To, we're trying to win money. Okay. We're trying to win money this week, all right? All right. What if I told you Saquon Barkley hundred yards on the ground? That, okay. that seems to be their one option. He'll probably get thirty tries. So <laughs> even if he's only averaging three and a half, he gets home. Aaron Jones forty receiving yards. The Giants linebacking core has been piss poor against athletic running backs. I mean, I I would point you in the direction of watching the way that Hilliard on Tennessee just destroyed them with some basic uh, routes. So I think Aaron Jones will be a problem this week. Aaron Jones to have 40 receiving yards. Saquon Barkley to have 100 rushing yards. That's all we need here. Nine to one. Nine to one. The Steelers are six to one this weekend, and they're oh catching 14 God. points. <laughs> Nine to one. If you live on the West Coast, you're going to cash that before you wake up, probably. 
I mean, assuming you're not up for the game like I am. Yeah. All right. Nine to one. They uh, see you can even get behind this. Yeah. No, it's not. There's nothing crazy about it. Normally, some of these they get a little wild. Uh, for me, I'm taking the Packers minus thirteen and a half. Oh. I'm taking the Packers to win both the first and second half. Uh, and then I'm taking uh, Robert Tunyon over thirty-five and a half receiving yards, and Saquon Barkley over forty receiving yards. That pays fifteen to one. I, I wow. think. I think again. Saquon, so many more things than mine. Saquon, yeah, no, and you got you got scissors, you got a hammer, it, it is some thumbtacks. It is, it is fifteen to one, Ryan. <laughs> uh, Barkley is going to be the primary receiver and runner. Uh, so, but they're not, you know what though? I will say they're not throwing it to him as much as I would have. I mean, if you think about where he got to his re- receiving over last week, it was a ridiculous play by him on a play that should have lost seven yards. That's true. Maybe, maybe Bellinger, they've been the play blocking. There. They've been run blocking. Well, the offensive line, you don't hear much about the offensive line run b- blocking problem because they've been doing it well. So uh, giants insider speaking, <laughs> dude, they, they've, <laughs> They didn't have a quarterback last week for a bit, and Barkley still got way over. I like th- they're able to run even when the other team knows they're going to run. It, it's 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 old school football, but kind of like it. Colby's going to be an NFL fan soon. Enough yeah, look with, out! With if you keep, keep playing ugly games. Uh, yeah, he could be on board. What about you, Scott? What do you got for a uh, win bet? Build your own bet. So I got a four pick and you mentioned ugly games, which will segue perfectly into my first two plays. I have the giants and Packers under 41 and a half. Yep. I have the giants team total under 14 and a half, which <laughs> oh. will make Ryan really annoyed, but oh. that's what I got. <laughs> I, have Laz- I have Lazard 60 plus receiving yards and I have Aaron Jones, 55 plus rushing yards. The giants against the pass have been decent this year. The problem is they played against Tannehill. Baker Mayfield, <laughs> Justin Fields and Cooper rush actually looked decent against them. And CD Lamb had a pretty big game. It would have been even bigger if he didn't drop that 30 to 40 yard pass oh, yeah. there in the middle of the game. But the point is, I do think Lazard is really one of the only receivers that Rodgers trusts. And he had 100 plus yards against New England last week. And Jones, it's pretty difficult with the committee with him and Dylan. But you're looking at the Giants against the run, they're allowing 5.1 yards per carry. I think that Green Bay is going to win a very ugly game. But I don't like either offense. I do like the Packers defense a lot more. I think they'll hold the giants to probably one touchdown in this game. Gano might kill me with field goals. He's a very good field goal kicker, but still I'm going to go with that four pick and that pays out at 10 to one. He is a great field goal kicker uh, coming off a game where he missed one, which is very rare. Uh, here, I, I, w- I had the lock on that, by the way, I had the giants team total under 21. He shanked the a chip <laughs> shot to get <laughs> the win. So, I, I will say go. this. I would not be surprised. The more that I'm kind of reading between the lines, I kind of have an uh, expectation they may they might want to allow the Packers to run the ball mm. somewhat successfully against them to avoid having Aaron Rodgers torch them with their like I, I think you're to your point like this it feels like we should just lock up the under we're not totals guys but they're, they're both I, I think they're going to be you know they don't have a quarterback that's a hundred percent. And so I think they're going to try Davis Webb isn't a hundred percent. We don't need Davis. Webb. <laughs> it, it, things aren't going well. If Davis Webb is taking snaps. Although uh, I did from, wa- is from healthy or no. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I did just watch some video. Danny dimes, Thank you, Scott, Dan, Dan Jones looks pretty healthy. He's moving around in practice. So yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure that a uh, trip to London will loosen up the uh, knee for him ankle. Is it, what is it? A high ankle sprain, right? No, that, that's great a, for running. It's just a regular ankle sprain. Oh, okay. Low ankle. You're not sprain. laser focused on the NFL, Sean. <laughs> You're talking about baseball. Oh, uh, we talk. We do. You know, I was just getting a little Phillies talk with Scott. He was talking me into the Phillies uh, taking the Cardinals down like that. Scott, appreciate you calling in as always. Make sure you give Scott a follow on Twitter at Reichel Radio. Uh, Scott, what do you got coming up podcast wise uh, that people can <laughs> check you out on? A lot of stuff. Uh, doing the NFL gambling podcast a couple times a week. Uh, also doing the NBA podcast. I know we did a couple of division previews. NBA season about a month away, less than a month away. Get excited! And I do have some breaking news for people in the SGPN community. So the prop cast has always been pretty much an NBA and an NFL show exclusively. Starting tomorrow, the NHL season begins in <laughs> Prague because why not? And Ryan and I are going, Ryan yeah. Gilbert are going to be doing the NHL prop cast. So get ready for that. During the season, we'll have some NHL props for you. 
Hell this, this yeah. This is actually good when we're talking this to the investors, Sean. No, oh, we got you, guys. You, you, I'm sure you guys have an NHL prop <laughs> show. Oh, you don't. Yeah, uh, propcast killing it, killing it with all these shows. Appreciate it as always. And again, follow Scott on Twitter at Reichel Radio. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Thanks. All right, Kramer. Uh, before we get to the interview uh, coming up here, thought we'd uh, shout out the Elias Game Plan app. That's right. Elias Game Plan app is uh, is great, man. Tons of good nuggets. I know all the nuggets uh, or a lot of these nuggets that I pull for these different game previews come right from the Elias game plan app. And of course, if you use the promo code SGPN 25, you get 25% off your first month when you subscribe. And uh, again, if you're serious about gambling, serious about fantasy, you need to download the Elias game plan app. They get you hooked up and uh, ready to go. Also, we're brought to you by trade coffee. That's right. I got a nice little cup of a delicious trade coffee here. Love trade coffee. It's it's great. And the reason it's so good is well, a, the, the, the roasters they partner up with are delicious. I mean, if you're ready to have the best cup of coffee you've ever had in your home, you got to get trade coffee. And what's cool about it is it's personalized specifically to you and your unique flavor profile. That's right. You take a coffee quiz. Uh, I know you're worried like, Oh wait, I got to take a quiz. It's a very easy uh, coffee quiz. You can probably even cheat. They just ask you, Hey, what kind of flavors do you like? What kind of flavors don't you like? And then they match a specific uh, coffee bean or, or blend of coffee to those taste buds. All you got to do is go to drinktrade.com slash SGP for $30 off your subscription to the best coffees in the country. Drinktrade.com slash SGP for $30 off. Last but not least, we're brought to you by Odds Trader. That's right. Odds Trader is your one stop shop when it comes to play by play updates, live scores, bet tracking, projected game day weather, key game stats. Love looking at Odds Trader when it comes to uh, shopping around live lines. Highly recommend going to oddstrader.com slash blue wire. That's O D D S trader.com slash blue wire. Odds Trader, the number one site for all your game day bets. Joining us on the line, he is the founder and CEO of Better Capital, Mr. Dave Van Eggman. Dave, thanks for calling into the show. Good to be with you guys. Yeah, no, uh, awesome to have you on the line. And uh, we get a ton of questions because obviously we start, started our own sports gambling podcast network. We're in the sports gambling space. We get a ton of uh, questions. People are always asking, like, "Hey, how do you get started in sports gambling?" I and and people honestly pitch us a ton of ideas for like apps for you know, like, what do you think about uh, micro in-game wagering? If we tied this to also a poker game, we get it. We get a ton of questions. Uh, some of it's like over our heads. We we do our best to answer, but I thought it'd be really cool um, to have you in studio and and also pick your brain and learn about kind of better capital story because you, if people aren't familiar and don't follow the business of sports gambling, you've actually been behind um, a lot of the like bigger deals that have kind of shaped the industry here in the past few years. So let's get started uh, at the beginning with you. When did you first get interested in sports gambling? Yeah, probably similar to you guys. I've been betting, playing fantasy football for 15 plus years. And I just, at some point in my career, I said, how, how can I do this professionally? Um, and that was at the time when daily fantasy was really starting to take off. FanDuel and DraftKings were not household names like they are today. Just, you know, things people did who got bored with their season long leagues and wanted to play for money more, more regularly, or at least that's how I thought about it. So I, I joined FanDuel um, in early 2015 as DFS was just starting on this big time growth curve. And then that, that sort of, the start of my story in, in sports gambling. Now, yeah. So I'm assuming you went to uh, you went to business school. Did you think like when you were going to business school? I mean, I, I don't know. Like, obviously, we started our podcast in 2011. You tell people like a podcast, B sports gambling. They look at you like you're crazy. Did you have any idea of like, hey, I I see this sports gambling thing coming down the line? Like for Ryan and I, we never had a vision of like, okay, in 10 years when they overturn Paps. Uh, We'll be ready to go. Did you have any sort of inkling that that you know this this wave of growth was coming to you? Absolutely not. It's just like everything else in gambling. Sometimes you have to get lucky. Uh, so I knew <laughs> da- I knew daily fantasy was going to be big just based on my own 
interaction with it, using it as a substitute to, to sports betting early days or a complement to to making some bets. And so I could see that growth trajectory. I actually didn't go didn't go to business school. I was working on Wall Street and a and a mentor told me, hey, like, what's the next Uber or Facebook or Snapchat that you're passionate about? And I'm like, well, I'm huge into sports. I like to gamble. And so for me, it was like, wow, could FanDuel and DraftKings be one of these big companies one day? And obviously almost 10 years later, they, they're getting into that echelon, but it was, uh, it was making a bet at an early stage and hoping that DFS would see huge growth. And obviously expectations were, were shattered when they opened up uh, sports betting and made those companies a, a lot bigger. So very, very lucky and, and fortunate. Now, now you said like your first job um, after Wall Street was over at FanDuel. Did you like wh- where did you start over at FanDuel? What kind of job and and what was like your day to day work like there? Yeah, I started as head of corporate development. So for the non finance folks, sort of corporate strategy, finance, uh, accounting type role, and we acquired a number of of small companies in and around the the fantasy space. We acquired a business called Number Fire. We raised lots of capital from investors. We raised several hundred million dollars to spend on those ads that everyone saw on ESPN or other places in, in 2015 or sponsoring a lot of podcasts back in, in 2015. So I was sort of responsible for raising the money to, to pay for all those commercials and, and advertising to help, to help grow the industry. Yeah, that's I, and and so uh, were you there then? I guess like when FanDuel made the switch to sports gambling, did, did like walk us through the conversations? I imagine this was on their radar early on, but was there a moment where they go, "Hey guys, uh, we have all these emails. These people love action. Uh, we we got to become a sports book." Was that like how did that go internally? Yeah, well, if you recall, I'm I'm here in the studio in Nevada actually in 2015 when FanDuel and DraftKings were taking off a lot of states went, wait a minute, is this gambling? Is this sports betting? <laughs> I, is, this, is this fantasy sports? I, I don't understand. And so actually we had to pull out of Nevada and a few other states and daily fantasy, the legality of it started to get questioned by, by certain states. And so we, we went and tightened our belts. We didn't spend as much on advertising. We tried to grow more conservatively, kind of hoping to, to wait things out for better days ahead. And then we started in 2016 passing legislation in states to clarify that daily fantasy was was legal. It was a game of skill. We passed laws in, I think, 19 states over the course of two years to that effect. And that really, I think, helped move the case forward with New Jersey and at the Supreme Court level trying to overturn PASPA. It was on the mind of people that, hey, it's sports, skill games, fantasy, gambling, you know, these things are converging. And so in 2017, um, as FanDuel sort of came out of, they tried to merge with DraftKings actually in 2016, which was something I worked on. And in 2017, we said, oh, the merger didn't happen. The government blocked it because we were the two big daily fantasy sports companies. Like, what do we do now? And in December of 2017, that's when the Supreme Court took up the PASPA case. And that was certainly a exciting time. And we said, oh, it could, could happen, could be possible. And it's one of the most vivid memories in my my career on May 14th, 2018, when the Supreme Court ruling came out that they did overturn PASPA and we were going to have sports betting. And that was kind of an oh shit moment of, OK, <laughs> we have to be ready to offer sports betting in New Jersey online pretty darn soon. And there was a whole heck of a lot of work that went into building the app, getting the FanDuel Sportsbook ready at the Meadowlands, which became one of, if not today, it's the, I think it's the highest grossing revenue retail sports book in the country, even outside, even including uh, Nevada, just given its scale. And so we established this pretty strong position in, in New Jersey. And then FanDuel and other companies in the space just started to, to take off as more and more states started legalizing sports betting. Yeah. And, and we always get questions on that as well. I mean, from my point of view, it does seem like an eventuality as far as California has has props on the ballot. I'm sure Texas, uh, you know, eventually they'll figure it out. What, when do you, if you had to guess or said an over under on when everyone will be able to place a bet on sports in America, what would you set that date at? Well, I'd set it as never because I don't think Utah, unfortunately, uh, is going to allow <laughs> it. But uh, Hawaii, I think they can go to the beach. They don't. They have better things to do. They don't have casinos or or anything else. I would say over under 40 states plus having sports online sports betting. 
probably 2027. 20, I do think it's inevitable, but it takes a long time. Um, in certain states, they've been having bills for three years working them well way through the legislature. This is something that, you know, to us, it seems super familiar to uh, a legislator later in their career who is just a sports fan, but has never placed a, a sports bet in their life. A little bit different. You got to get them up the educational curve. Why is this good? Why is, frankly, everyone's doing it today already in your state. The state is just not reaping the tax benefits and not setting up a regulated market that protects consumers, which I think has been the huge benefit of the legalization. As everyone knows, there's seamless ways to deposit, seamless ways to withdraw. And so I think it's sort of inevitable that the vast majority of states see that and say, hey, this activity is happening. Um, but it's challenging. Like in California, it is on the ballot, but constituents in certain states are against it. Tribal interests are certainly against it in California. They want it to be retail only to keep it to themselves. So it's challenging depending on what state you're in of satisfying the existing constituents, making sure legislators understand and appreciate why it's important to to have it. And it's got to be frustrating. I mean, we're in California, so we so we see some of the no uh, campaigns where they're basically pitching, hey, these gambling companies, they're going to infiltrate your kid's phone and that your kid's going to be gambling <laughs> in no time. And it's like they're almost a, the assumption of just a very, very low bar when it comes to education, as you point out. I would imagine even in like these conversations now where we're getting more mature, we're able to use other states as reference points. And you're still probably just is it is it purely just someone who's old and doesn't necessarily care to get up to speed? Is that really a lot of the friction points at this point? Just not like not seeing the future? Yeah, it's certainly some. It's probably an overgeneralization. There's also infighting about, hey, what do we use the money for? Is it for education? Is it for youth sports? Like in Ohio and Republicans and Democrats bicker over how to use the funds versus like, should we do this? And that that means it takes another year to make it happen because they got to resolve who wins the fight of where the money goes from the, the taxes generated or, you know, who controls the licenses. Is it the casino companies who have been lobbying in states or own a casino in the state and thus supporting state legislatures? Or is it pro sports teams? There's a, there's a lot of constituents. Um, and so that makes it more complicated and that makes it take time. I think uh, most of us know nothing in government seems to happen very fast. So uh, the, the, the time to figure that stuff out takes a few years, unfortunately. So in your mind, so just, he, we obviously all the states haven't gotten there yet, but which state has nailed it? The, like which state has kind of set the bar for executing it the best so far? I, I think it's New Jersey. That's that's my home state. It was the first one to open. They opened the fastest once PASPA uh, got overturned. They were live in, in August or, or September of 2018 after PASPA was repealed, the federal ban on sports betting in May of that year. So they were on the forefront. I think they have reasonable tax rates, a lot of market participants, a good regulatory agency. They're just, they're getting it right in a way that other states, you know, hopefully get there, but maybe institute different tax policies, different registration requirements, all these things that make it more challenging or that keep people using their bookie or using the offshore website that they use. And so I think, I think New Jersey's done the best so far. Yeah, obviously New Jersey had a lot of experience in uh, making sports bets and, and regulating sports markets, uh, certainly in the, in the uh, black market uh, before things, uh, you know, before they turned the key and, and became legit. So you're over at, you're over at FanDuel. Uh, things are going great. PAPSA gets overturned. Uh, well, how do you end up over at Barstool? Cause I know, you were a big part of that deal where Barstool ended up selling their company essentially to Penn. Uh, I would love to hear about that transition and then we can kind of get into the into the deal itself. Yeah, it was super interesting. Obviously, Barstool has been around as a as a digital media media company for 15 years, started in 2003. And in 2018, FanDuel did an exclusive partnership with Barstool to start advertising sports betting to potential customers stoolies in, in New Jersey. And this was, hey, you know, this came fast and furious. We established it was four months from when, oh my gosh, we're going to have sports betting to when it went live. So Barstool was figuring out what to do. And they said, hey, let's do what we do in every other category. Let's have an advertising partner and let's promote them. And so that's what Barstool did. I worked on the FanDuel team that, that put that deal together. And after seeing kind of six plus months of results, I said to myself, oh, oh boy, we're not paying them enough. Uh, they're doing a heck of a lot right in terms of sending us 
users driving engagement. And so I got to know Erica and Dave and the rest of the team there. And I said, Hey, I think you can do a lot more with this. Uh, frankly, I've, I'd been at FanDuel for almost five years at that point. So was open to, to trying new things. And I said, I think we could make this really big with your brand. You know, you look at, you know, we're sitting today in 2022 and it's just in the news that ESPN is finally going to announce its big deal or it's rumored to be doing a big deal with DraftKings. Barstool was a, a smaller, more nimble company and was able to to move fast, or I thought they certainly could. And there were a lot of casino companies that didn't have brands or that wanted to get into this online space and really needed a catalyst or a way to do it. So I thought there would be a lot of um, casino companies potentially interested in partnering or doing something more with Barstool, like what what happened with Penn National. So so you uh, you you kind of pitched them this idea of like, hey, let's let's find essentially a sports book that we can put the Barstool brand on top of uh, more or less. And instead of just promoting FanDuel, we're promoting our own sports book and, you know, and obviously getting a share of the profits instead of just, you know, whatever sort of um, CPM or CPA, whatever sort of like sign up referral download deal that they had. And I'm assuming that was the pitch. And then, so you come up with that concept was Penn one of your early targets. Did Penn come to you? I imagine once you started taking this to market, it was it was pretty appealing, right? Yeah, it, exactly. We we came up with the idea. We said we want to be in the business, but we can't necessarily start it from scratch. We don't own casinos. We don't have the infrastructure to do it ourselves, but we can do a lot more. So we put together a short list of casino companies. And candidly, you know, when we sold FanDuel in 2018, which I was a part of, we sold it to a UK online gambling company called Flutter. We met with all the casinos. We met with MGM. We met with Caesars. We met with Penn. And I had the good fortune of, hey, we had a year of data and FanDuel owned 50% market share in New Jersey. So I could go around and say, hey, remember me? You, you guys were wrong. You know, Caesars and MGM and others weren't going to just dominate because they were casino incumbents. Like FanDuel really had something. It had a database. It had a brand. It was mobile first. It resonated with people who wanted to bet on sports legally on their phone. And I said, the same thing could be said of Barstool, big brand, huge audience. There's something here that, you know, you need more than just yourself. And so Penn, and there were certainly a handful of other casino companies that could fit that criteria of needing to, you know, have that catalyst, have that brand, have that marketing engine embedded um, in their business. So Penn was one of a number of companies that I approached early on after after joining Barstool, and it it just so happened there was a good mutual interest there, and we went off to the races to to make a deal happen. Now, I I just saw in the news that um, Penn ended up buying the rest of Barstool. Like, how did that go? Like mechanics wise, I know they basically acquired a majority share of Barstool, is and then there was some sort of clause in there where they would get the rest at a certain price or Kind of, kind of walk through the the details of that because I think that's pretty interesting too. Yeah, it's it's often you know when you do these big corporate deals, it's often you get married right away, and we sort of structured it like, hey, we'll get engaged. Penn will buy a material part of Barstool, but not all of it. And theoretically, there we you know we didn't have to go to the altar together. Um, but then you know things were working well, and and Penn decided to exercise its its option that it had in the deal to buy the rest of Barstool. And I think, well, why not at this point? Like they're so tied to the Barstool brand. They're so tied to the Barstool personalities. I know Dave and others talk about, you know, owning a lot of Penn stock. There was a lot of aligned interest in how we set up the deal. So to me, it it made sense for Penn to, to buy the rest of the company. And I think it was a, you know, win-win for both sides because I don't think Penn would be where it is today without Barstool. And Barstool got, got to a nice... Um, liquidity event for its shareholders and has a nice, really nice opportunity in front of it to keep growing in the space with Penn. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned about like Dave talking about having a bunch of Penn shares. It is funny that they were like even merchandising the Penn uh, like stock ticker on sweatshirts. I'm like, wow, you really got something. If you could get someone to buy a sweatshirt that just has a stock ticker name on it, that's what you know you've really uh you've really kind of like influenced an audience so dave i'm looking at you 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 start out on wall street probably doing all right for yourself then you go over to FanDuel. right when they're switching to sports gambling you help solidify that deal to sell 
a fan duel to flutter. Then you're like, oh, I got a good angle on this barstool pen thing. You get over there, you help facilitate that deal. Uh, you know, some people, at least people in our audience would go, what is this guy ever working again? Like he's, he's probably doing all right for himself. What, um, you know, after, after you sold that or helped sell the, uh, Barstool to pen, what was your, what was your next move after that? Yeah, I, I think, uh, could, could have been my wife's outside the studio. So she, uh, she wanted me to keep working. Um, you know, I, I said sports betting is only going to grow keep bigger. Going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sports betting is only going to get bigger <laughs> over the next decade as more and more States legalize it. And so I, I was that in my mind, two of the top five at the time operators in the space. And so it would have been hard to compete against them. Um, and I knew that. And I said, not, not everyone has an inherent right to win here what's the best way to play the next 10 years in the online sports betting, all, all real money gaming, whether that's lottery, casino online, other verticals, how, how do we make money um, with this expansion? And I thought to myself, well, there's a lot of technology companies that are trying to supply to the, the FanDuel's, the DraftKings, the WinBets, the MGM's, et cetera. Maybe there's interesting opportunities backing those companies who don't necessarily need as much money who maybe have, you know, better underlying business models from a um, P&L or, or profit margin standpoint. And so I, I devised a strategy and, and decided to start an investment firm to focus on, you know, tech companies within the space that really nobody knows, but are on our underlying DraftKings and FanDuel and component parts that they utilize to power the apps and power the ecosystem in that way. You know, we could invest for the long term and ride along on the growth of the industry over the next decade. I don't know if it was clever or, or no one was doing it because it's a highly regulated market and investors weren't familiar with this. But I just said, hey, we've had a good run on the company side. Let's let's invest in other companies in this space and uh, play the long game here in the, the online gambling industry. I mean, it's how they got rich yeah, in the gold I mean, rush, right? Selling pickaxes, not not actually finding gold. So yeah, you're, you're using I mean, our I, analogy. That's our analogy. There That's what go. we told all of our investors. We're picks and shovels yes. investors yep. in a gold rush. Everyone needs those uh, Levi's. I remember he was another guy who was just like, hey, if you're buying it for gold, you're not going to do it in sweatpants. You're going to need a pair of Levi's. Let's go. Um, now, so you're you're calling in uh, from the Blue Wire studio out in Las Vegas. Uh, we've been with Blue Wire over like a year and a half. Uh, it's been a It's been a great relationship. I know you've been a part of their story as well, but uh, yeah, like besides Blue Wire, what are what are some other companies you've been involved in, and and ones that you're you're really proud of, like what they've done so far? Yeah, I, I in sort of in this in between period from when I left Barstool to when I got our firm Better Capital formally off the ground, I personally invested and helped a number of companies kind of grow in this space. Blue Wire, Kevin Jones, and the team was one of those, and it's the first time in the, the studio for me. But I helped him put together the deal with Win to build the build the studio and launch a WinBet partnership, something I'm I'm really proud of and, and love what the team's doing at Blue Wire. And then when we set up our venture capital fund, we started backing software companies in and around the online gambling space. So we have a payments business called Interchecks that helps process faster withdrawals uh, to customers. So if you're using one of the regulated apps, you know, it might take a couple of days to get your money back when you try to make a withdrawal, just given the different uh, approvals that are needed and the friction in the, the payment processing ecosystem. And Interchecks has developed technology to make that instantaneous. So you hit withdrawal on FanDuel and then you want to go to the bar with your buddies, that money's back in your in your bank account immediately. So you can go do that. And we think that's a really cool use case of, of technology in the space that people might not intuitively think of. Um, we're also investing. That's really. <laughs> I was going to say that's why it's important that you are a gambler to be a thought leader in the space because you like the average person isn't going to be like you know what deposit withdrawals that's the problem but that would be the number one friction point for any gambler who remembers back in the day in the gray area times when you'd have to wait six weeks for a check. So yes, please hit the turbo button. We love that kind of software. Yeah, nobody wants to go to Western yeah. Union to collect their money a month, <laughs> a month after it gets I was sent just, back to the country. I was just, yeah, I was just about to say, I just walked past the Safeway the other day that had a Western <laughs> Union and I shuddered thinking of like going like, oh no, I just have some friends in uh, Costa Rica that I need to send some money to. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, the whole process of going through that was just uh, crazy. Oh, and you really awesome. nailed our audience as far as, 
take immediately withdrawing your winning so you, you could then go take it to the bar to go get drunk with your friends. I think you nailed our uh, our crowd there. I, I'm sure you get pitched all the time, whether it's companies, whether it's just, you know, probably even some of your personal friends have been like, Dave, have you ever thought about this? What what advice would you give to uh, either small companies, uh, people in the in the business at all, or just, uh, you know, your, your everyday entrepreneur as far as like pitching an investor? What's the best way to go about getting on your radar and and getting you to give them money, honestly? Well, I think it all comes down to the, the business. What, what is your idea? If you're trying to build a, a copycat or to your guys' point, micro wagering in game, something that may be happening within the existing ecosystem today or something that's not necessarily totally new and differentiated, I think it becomes hard. The, the ecosystem is incredibly crowded. So do something that's unique and really value add, like, like our payments business. That's something different, something unique. We invested also in a, a company that's the leader in player prop market making, like build your model, figure out where there's you know new markets that could be created, uh, other things that would be new and innovative for the space. I think that's what you have to lean in on because if you don't have a good idea or, or a really strong business case, I think it does, doesn't matter who you get connected to. That's, that's the easy part. It's how do we, how do you build a business? How do you, how do you come up with something that's differentiated in an ecosystem where there's lots of innovation happening and it's, it, it's really crowded because it's, it is such a high growth, exciting space to be in. Yeah, no, I totally. And, and it's, it's, yeah, we, we get hit up all the time and, um, yeah, it's like, get, get the idea right first. And then worry. I, I think people get like ahead of themselves. Like I got to trademark this and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, you know, start, start the idea, come up with a business plan. If it's something you can start by yourself, I, I would always, I would always tell people start, you know, start it out by yourself. And then if you really need money and it's like justified, then bring on people. But if you can do it by yourself, you're, you're putting yourself in a, in a much better spot long-term, I would think. Right. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. Um, what about the, what about the content, uh, world specifically? I know you deal uh, primarily with tech, but let's say, uh, you were like co-owner in a independently owned sports gambling content network that was doing really well. One could argue the largest independent sports gambling content network, haven't taken any outside money. What kind of advice would you give those hypothetical guys or gals? Partner deeper with Blue Wire. I think that's uh, that you, you're already down the path, a really compelling path. Because I think in, in sports gambling and, and podcasting and media, it's all about building audience. I think Barstool had such a phenomenal outcome because they built such a huge, loyal, rabid audience. To your point, they were buying sweatshirts that said P-E-N-N -N yeah. on them. Uh, because they were so enthused that Dave was excited and other Barstool personalities were excited in the partnership with Penn. So scaling audience and you guys are doing it. It's through top quality, top quality content and then figure out the monetization strategy from there. But certainly there's a lot of room to, to continue running in this space. And I think you guys have a good thing going. Well, thanks, Dave. And, uh, you know, part of our, part of our uh, strategy and what we do here, we got to give you to give out a pick. I know uh, before the show we were talking, you're out there in Vegas for the Notre Dame-BYU game. Right now, WinBet has Notre Dame as a three-and-a-half-point favorite. I, I saw on your Twitter you've, you've been to some Notre Dame games where it didn't work out. How are you feeling about the Irish, and uh, what's, your, what's your play for Notre Dame-BYU? I'm feeling better than I was three weeks ago after we were 0-2. Um, I, I think they're, they're on the rise. Hopefully I, I often bet with my heart and I told you guys, you know, I'm an EV negative better, so I might not have the best advice, but I'll, I'll bet the uh, Notre Dame, the three and a half with my heart, but I, I have found that the, the sharp money is on the under in the game. So I think I'll, I'll hedge by taking the under and the, the Irish minus the points. Yeah. That's well, probably, as, probably a, as the a way guy, to do it. as a guy who's also rooting for a team who has a new coach. And things aren't starting uh, super, super great with my Virginia Tech Hokies and Coach Pride. I do wish that there will be better days ahead. And as a as a guy from Jersey, I'm obviously taking the Catholics versus the Mormons, Sean. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it it should be a good game. And uh, yeah, I don't know, three and a half, four points. That's a lot with uh, with BYU there. But uh, Dave, appreciate you calling into the show. Uh, give Dave a follow on Twitter at Dave underscore Van Egmond. 
and uh, you know, check out Better Capital. Is there is there anywhere else we should send people, Dave? No, our site's bettercapital.com for people who want to learn more about us and our portfolio and what we're investing in. But appreciate your guys' time and the opportunity to be on the show and tell our story. All right. Appreciate it, Dave. And uh, best of luck with the Irish. Thanks, guys. Go Irish. Thanks again uh, to Scott. And uh, yeah, tune into the pregame show. I probably will not be on live for the entire pregame show. Look for me uh, hopping on the Discord. I'll be here. Calling in live from the Eagles tailgate. Uh, if you're not in the Discord already, you're missing out. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. Rate and review the podcast any way you can. Take a screenshot of you rating and reviewing it. Submit it on the contest tab in the SGPN app for your chance to win $100 every Monday, AKA March Monday. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stagging the Money Green, and he is Ryan. You're welcome, Sean. Kramer, let it ride. <laughs>